Good morning. Uh, we are early morning here in central Illinois, and I uh, am just going to talk for a few minutes about um, getting Inventor and using Inventor to actually create 3D models that you can use for uh, 3D printing, for machining, pretty much anything uh, that you want to do as far as making <coughs> special things out, out of your designs. Now, uh, those of you who know me know that I have been a, a long-time uh, toy geek, predominantly the old toys from my childhood in the 70s um, and early 80s. I like to collect them. You can see them all on my back wall. That's just a part of what I've collected over the last 25-plus uh, years of collecting. But I also like to do a lot of customs and... Of course, finding things at flea market, especially uh, when they're older, busted up, um, they have given me different types of uh, projects, and I got to looking at how can I model up parts and replace parts uh, for some of the things that I find fairly regularly. Now, this kind of got started um, a little bit over a year ago. Uh, my son and I... Um, went down to Louisville, Kentucky back in the summer to a G.I. Joe show that's held there every uh, July or June, sometime in there, and we got asked by Buddy Finnethy and his pals down in Atlanta that uh, do the Toy Lana show every year uh, a little bit about 3D modeling So and 3D printing. That's kind of how uh, we got started with this. We were carrying around a box of some of our um, parts that we had made and some of our different accessory items that we had made and they saw it and they thought it was pretty cool looking. Um, I basically designed some. My son Clayton, he designed some as well. And then of course he predominantly does all the 3D printing. 3D printing is still kind of a love-hate relationship for me. Uh, so anyway, they kind of asked us if we'd be able to and be interested at that time to kind of come in and uh, do like a round table on 3D printing and the state of the hobby and where the uh, toy collecting hobby is going for now. Toy Lana is usually done in March every year. It's very hard as a teacher for me to be able to get away for that show, although I have been in the past. I love it. It's a great show. I strongly encourage people to go. This year with the coronavirus, it was unfortunately had to be canceled, so we're going to try to take everything online. And that's kind of what I'm here for in doing this. So I'll be giving and doing a presentation and showing some of these different models and how to draw stuff uh, online. And I'll be posting those on my YouTube page for you to see. You can ask questions. Some of these I am planning on uh, even going ahead and making some of these models available uh, on Thingiverse. If you want to download and be able to print for free if you already have a 3D printer, but not maybe not sure on how to actually do the modeling uh, so I will make some of those available as well uh, just to help out and because it's that time uh, you know with the way everything is going nowadays I think we we all need to support each other and I'll be glad to help out anybody out there with their hobby as we go so anyway I just wanted to show you here and you can kind of see uh, here is the one of the very first things that I started. Uh, not only uh, do I collect G.I. Joe, I also collect Johnny West, um, some of the best of the West toys from the 60s and 70s, uh, Lone Ranger. So <clears throat> I find a lot of these uh, buckboard wagons out there for Johnny West, and oftentimes they're missing lots of pieces. So um, and so doing, I he said, well, especially these springs. So it's like, well, I can design those springs and make those springs and uh, reprint them wheels and especially even these yokes and stuff so just kind of showing I'll real quick show a couple of the different designs that I started playing with as far as covered wagons and um, again some of this this particular design was inspired by a uh, marks the little army men uh, I also am into those so there was a wagon I think it came in one of the Civil War sets that showed like a canopy type um, like this. I think it might have even been like a, one of the U.S. Army medical tents or something. So kind of inspired me to try out something like that. Um, so then just your basic covered wagon here like this. And of course the big pieces here are these uh, as we go. Um, so you got 
uh, on the buckboard, these pieces are always snapped off either here or on the actual buckboard itself where that like hooks into. So kind of designed a couple of different sizes like that where we could go ahead and uh, rehook the, up the horses. So, and of course, uh, just playing around, uh, I started with a bullet man helmet because um, I wanted to kind of have different bullet man helmets. So, and then that kind of led into little different designs here. I was thinking about a crusaders type helmet uh, for uh, knights and armor for 12 inch GI Joes or even the smaller GI Joes. Uh, and of course, then my own totally on my own creations is something here. Uh, just like a field pack, uh, notice the Ode to the Adventure Team uh, in there where it's multi-pieces and it can all be th 3D printed and assembled and then this is something that the Joe can carry around on his back. So um, that kind of gives you an idea of some of these different um, types of designs that can be made using Inventor software to 3D model it. Now, um, there is all sorts of CAD software out there. A lot of it is available for free download. Uh, you just have to get to learn it. Um, Inventor is not uh, uh, available for free download unless you are a student or an educator. Um, Autodesk has made a student version uh, that is free for download for students. Uh, if you have a uh, student ID, if you're taking any type of community college credits or or in a high school, um, even a four-year university, or if you're a professor or a teacher of any of those type classes, you can also get that for free download. Uh, I teach Inventor Software uh, at a high school level right now, so I've taught on the uh, uh, adults and uh, basically on both high school, college level, and even training within industry. Um, on drafting uh, as well as blueprint reading over the last 25 years of my work experience. So uh, I've done a lot on this and I'll talk to uh, especially um, from a manufacturing standpoint or even the making part of this. Uh, there are things that you need to be doing in your design uh, that make these a little easier to 3D print and of course if you are planning on manufacturing this type of uh, designs in some other method than some of the way that we draw and design for 3D printing is different than the way I would draw and design this if I were to say make some type of a molded part out of this where I wanted to get a casting um, and then make molded pieces. So as you design you kind of have to think about the way the parts are actually going to be manufactured um, there as well. So anyway, that's a brief introduction of what's going on. Um, on Saturday, March uh, 21st, um, four days from now, there will be um, a bunch of activity going on in a virtual Toylana. Uh, I'll post the link to that so that you guys can see and you'll be able to join me and others. Uh, I'm not the only person that's doing this. There, are, I'll give some shout outs. Uh, Jim Egner uh, is also a longtime G.I. Joe collector who's been making all sorts of uh, really cool, neat things out there for G.I. Joe collectors. Um, of course, the train guys, uh, anybody who's in model trains, a lot of uh, people that are out there are using this to design and 3D print buildings for their train layout, whether they're using HO scale or O scale. You're seeing 3D printing being used a lot in that hobby. Uh, even uh, the hobby, like I had mentioned before, the Marks Army Men, uh, those different Marks play sets that were really popular back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. There's application there where guys are starting to use that for some of their hobbies as well to make stuff. Um, really, it's an untapped area. Lots of things that you can do and lots of things that will come out here in the future. Uh, 3D printing, like I mentioned, is a love-hate relationship for me. My son actually does more of the actual printing. To me, 3D printing takes a long time, so it's really cool to see your designs come out. But I'm very impatient, so I don't always like to wait for my uh, 
designs to come out. I tend to favor traditional molding techniques and traditional molds for parts instead, but that's just me. Either way, the first step comes to knowing how to design and draw it up in some type of a CAD software before you can create your STL files uh, and your other files that are needed by whatever way you're going to go ahead and manufacture it. So anyway, I hope you uh, pay attention. Please like uh, this video, subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel so you can stay up on top of it. Um, and I'll be posting links throughout this week as we go and get all of these things taken care of. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.